Hello and welcome to my shop. A friend found a severely damaged warm wheel in his old lathe and I volunteered to make a spare part. Let me start with a quick overview how I made the warm gears using the free hobbing method. We need a gear hob which is a copy of the warm screw with added cutting edges. Making the hob required the following steps. Grinding a set of stylus cutters, turning a mandrel and the basic shape of the hobber, helical milling the threads, milling cutting edges and relief angles, heat treatment. Making the actual wheels started with basic turning operations, followed by pre-cutting the teeth with a regular involute cutter. The gears are finally shaped with the hobber. Let's go to work. I started taking measurements of the original screw. The thread angle was determined to 15 degrees. Cutting this screw like a regular thread on the lathe turned out impractical. Thus I decided to use helical milling to make the hop. This required a custom stylus cutter with an included angle of 30 degrees. At first the dividing head holding the work was aligned horizontally. A 15 degrees angle requires a table travel of 37.3 mm for a horizontal displacement of 10 mm. The table stop was set accordingly. The angle of the table was adjusted for a horizontal displacement of 10 mm. Let's start grinding. Off camera I ground away half of the cone. Here are the semi-finished cutters. Finally I added a relief angle. The angle of the cutter was verified with a protractor. Now we are going to make the actual hobbing tool. A 60 mm bar of silver steel was used.
I checked the fit to a mandrel which was made off camera. The relief angles of the hopper will require some eccentric turning milling. This is the setup for center drilling the holes. The DRO was used to locate the holes. The outer diameter of the hop was turned to 44 mm. This is the setup for cutting the threads of the worm screw. Walter recommends driving the spindle of the dividing head directly via gear train from the spindle of the x-axis. The required pitch, or more correctly lead, is 2 mm times 3 times pi equals 18.85 mm. Using a little script, I found a combination of gears resulting in a very close approximation of this lead. Here I'm verifying that the lead or pitch matches the original screw. I started cutting the thread with extremely light cuts using a regular 3mm carbide end mill.
As the warm screw is triple threaded, the work has to be rotated by 120 degrees for each thread. The regular dividing operation of the dividing head cannot be used as the spindle of the dividing head is directly driven in this case. Thus I turned the work by 120 degrees using the hexagonal clamping block.
I switched from the ends mill to the stylus cutter made previously. This is the hobber after many passes milled with a stylus cutter. The relief side of the tip of the cutter showed some damage, so I finished the work with a new stylus. I chucked the work eccentrically to mill the relief angles. Unfortunately I lost the footage showing this process, I'm sorry for that. The eccentric setup generates a larger radius resulting in a flat behind each cutting edge. This forms the relief. In the chuck I used spacer blocks, on the tailstock side I made use of the eccentric center holes. Material was removed from the OD using an end mill. I finished the hobber by milling the cutting edges.
The cutter was hardened and tempered. Off camera, my apologies. Now let's make the actual warm wheel. Material was bronze. This is a mill turning operation forming the rough shape of the wheel. The diameter of the milling cutter is close to the required root diameter of the warm screw. The next step was pre-cutting the teeth with a regular involute cutter. The teeth need to be skewed. The angle is determined by the ratio of the circumference of the pitch circle and the lead or pitch of the worn screw. Both measurements determine a triangle with the ratio circumference over pitch. We can eliminate pi and get 40 over 6. This ratio can directly be used to set up the angle of the dividing head on the table. 
The teeth are cut with a regular module 2 involute cutter. However, instead of moving the table in X and using the cutter like a saw blade, the table is risen and the round shape of the cutter transferred to the work.
Now we are ready to cut the final shape of the worm wheel with the hopper. The wheel is mounted on a mandrel between two bearings. This allows it to spin freely. Here I am aligning the work with the hopper. I started very slowly and make sure that the pre-cut teeth remained aligned to the tool. Thank <laughs> you. 
The distance between the spindle of the warm wheel and the screw was checked on my lathe. I used the original wheel as a reference and adjusted the cross slide until the wheel matched the screw. The dial indicator was set to zero in this position. I brought the new wheel in contact to the screw and checked the dial indicator, which was within 0.1 millimeters. So that was close enough. After some cleaning work, chamfering and deburring, three wheels were finally done. Honestly, I have never done this before. The project required a lot of experimentation. Anyways, I attempted to show most of the steps so that you could hopefully follow along. Thanks for watching. This is required as the free hopping method does not provide reproducible again. This is required as the free hopping method does not provide reproducible results.